Hello, I'm Paul, and in this video lesson, I'm going to talk you through some of the key essentials of using Adobe Camera Raw, Photoshop's Camera Raw editor. And I'm going to show you how to just fine tune things like tone and color and contrast using the Raw editor, just the, the most basic tools in the Raw editor to transform a Raw image from straight from the camera that looks a bit flat and a bit lackluster into something that's much more colorful and vibrant and punchy. There's our original raw file, unedited, unprocessed. And there's our finished version, which looks much more vibrant and punchy and much more like the scene as we saw it at the time. So to do that, the first thing I need to do, I'm just going to close down our raw underscore start file up here. Uh, it's not going to save the changes. And I need to go to File, Open. And then I'm going to click on Raw Start to open up our start file in the Camera Raw editor. And uh, there's our, our main image. And you can see there are various tools along the top here. There's a zoom tool, a hand tool. One of the most useful tools is the white balance tool. Now, the white balance in this shot actually looks pretty good. But if I, if I click on a bit of the image that I think should be white, like the clouds, you can see it doesn't actually have much of an effect on the overall image. If we go to the white balance drop down here, go as shot, you can see the color temperature is 4950. And if I click on the white up here, it changes to 4850, 4900, and so on. So we're in the right ballpark, certainly. There's 4950. So we're going to leave the uh, white balance pipette there. There are a few other things that we're not going to get into too much. There's a color sampler tool, targeted adjustment tool, which allows you to target any adjustments you make over here to specific areas that you've actually selected. There's a crop tool, um, which is quite useful, and uh, especially as it, it crops the raw file, but it, it doesn't actually get rid of any of the information that's around. So all the, all the background information that you've sort of cropped out is still preserved in the original raw file. If I right click, I can clear that crop. There's a straighten tool, and this is quite handy. Again, I think the horizon here is actually fairly straight, but if I click and drag along the horizon like that, line it up, you can see actually it isn't quite straight. It's um, cropped slightly at an angle, so we know that that's actually helped straighten up our image. There's a spot removal tool, and this is quite useful, but it's probably slightly more intuitive doing this in the main editing window of Photoshop. Red eye removal, adjustment brush, and some other bits and pieces and rotation tools here. And this is our, our preview. We haven't made any changes yet, so if you click on the preview, it hasn't made much of a difference apart from our sort of slight white balance change from clicking on the cloud. And uh, the next thing we want to look at is the histogram. Now, this provides the key to all of the adjustments we're going to make in this palette here, because it allows us to evaluate the tonal range of our image and to see what we've got in the way of dark shadows over on this side, bright highlights over on this side, and midtones in the middle. And as you can see, it's actually a pretty healthy histogram, but the image just looks a bit flat. So there are a few things we can do to improve things. And the first is just to up the exposure slightly, just to drag that histogram to the right, around about plus 0.5. Now, one thing I can do to make sure that as I do this, that I'm not clipping any of my highlights, and my highlights aren't clipping to pure white, is I can click on the highlight clipping warning up here. And this displays these red patches that show areas of my image that will print out just as pure white without any image detail. Now, as this is a, a cloud and a, a highlighted area of sunlit cloud. I'm not too worried that there's a little patch there of white that is showing no detail. So I'm happy to just boost the exposure all the way up like so, because it'll help me when I come to my other edits further down. Now, the recovery slider is used to recover detail in very blown out areas, such as our clouds here. And if I drag that to the right, you'll see those blown out areas start to disappear as detail is restored. And the further I drag it, the darker those clouds become and the more detailed they become in terms of texture and tone. And if I drag it all the way to the right, you see the clouds are almost mid-tone. This is fine, but it also has the effect of flattening the rest of the image and also flattening the sky, reducing the contrast in the sky. And actually, I don't mind those bright highlights, so I'm going to drag recovery back to zero and keep it where it is. Fill light I'm going to look at in a minute. I'm going to return to fill light. Blacks I'm definitely going to bump up. Um, because this is going to boost the shadows and the contrast in our scene. And I can turn the shadow clipping warning on and off up here. 
to show areas of blue. And these patches of blue show me where my shadows have been clipped or are too dark to contain any texture detail. Now, I don't mind a bit of dark, very black shadows here. If I drag it too far, um, there's, there, these blue air patches become too extensive. So keep that about plus 15. And I'm actually going to drag brightness down as well. I'm just going to tone down the brightness around about plus 25, just to take out some of the brightness in the water in the foreground. And I'm going to boost contrast. I'm going to drag contrast up to plus 40. Yeah, usually be quite subtle with this contrast slider. It's quite heavy handed, but as this is such a flat image, I'm happy to drag it all the way up to plus 40. Now those are our sort of tonal level sliders here, addressing the tones and the contrast. Um, clarity slider deals with local contrast. I'm just going to turn these clipping warnings off so they're not distracting us. And uh, if I drag the clarity slider to the right, you'll see sort of very defined areas like the rocks in the foreground here become really sharp edged if I drag that all the way up to 100. And if I drag it back down, you can see the difference that makes. That's down, and that's back up, and it really sh sharpens everything up, but it can make the image look a bit posturized and a bit garish. So you need to be fairly careful again, because this is quite flat, I'm going to just dra drag this to plus 40. Vibrance looks at the, the cooler colors, the blues and the greens. Again, you could usually be quite subtle, but because it's flat, I'm going to drag that to plus 20. You see this brings out the blues in the skies and in the water and the greens in the distant hills there. And saturation deals with warmer colours, the reds, yellows and oranges. And this is one you definitely want to be subtle with, particularly if there are any of those colours in the image. Otherwise it really will start to look garish. So I'm going to drag that up to, in this case, plus 10, which is more than I would usually do. And if I now click on the preview icon up here, you can see already, just, just by tweaking, these sliders in our basic tab here, it's already made quite a dramatic difference to how punchy and colourful our image is. And I did mention I'd return to the fill light slider. I'm just going to drag that up slightly, around about 10, and just to introduce a bit of light into the water in the lake here, and so we can see a bit more detail in those rocks. And the fill light just sort of throws some, almost like a bit of universal fill flash at the whole image, and just to uh, brighten things up slightly. Now that's pretty much the, the basic tab taken care of. The only other tab that you get in, um, in the Elements version of Adobe Camera Raw is the Detail tab here, and it's not quite as detailed as this, but it does allow you to, to sharpen the image in a Camera Raw rather than the main version of Photoshop. But to use it, or at least to preview the changes, you need to zoom in to 100%, so you can see 100% down here, and then you can drag the amount slider left and right to determine how sharp your image is. You don't want to drag it too far because you'll start to sharpen the, the sort of pixels, the digital noise, and uh, exacerbate that in your image. And usually something in the region of um, 66, perhaps, with what, between one and one and a half radius, will just sharpen things up quite nicely. And again, you can click on the preview to turn it on and off. But you might want to introduce a bit of masking just to tone down the effect of the sharpening again, just to stop the sharpening of some of the uh, digital noise and artifacts and that just makes it a bit more subtle like so I might just drag radius back down to one there just so it's not too too full on and also reduce noise um, luminance and color noise in this tab um, I might do that I might just drag that up to maybe 40 plus 40. Although this does reduce noise, it does reduce the effect of the sharpening as well, so you don't want to drag it too far. It's, it'll soften out the noise, but it'll also soften out the detail and the sharpening. So actually I might drag that back down to around about plus 25. The Adobe Camera Raw version. One of the best tabs in the CS version is this Tone Curve tab. And uh, if I zoom back out to fit in view, you'll see if I go to Point, like so, I can use this. I can either set the drop down here by going to strong contrast to really boost the contrast. That's actually not bad. That's pretty good. That's pretty much how I'd have it. The sort of default is medium contrast. Linear is a bit flatter. Or you can take control yourself. So if I put it on linear and drag up the highlights there, maybe the midtones, I drag those down a bit more actually. And the shadows. And you can play with this and you can see how I can really control how bright the highlights are and the midtones and the shadows and I can set any number of points along here to get just the effects I want. Um, that's probably a bit overdone. I'm actually going to go back to medium contrast 
just bump it up a bit like so and possibly bump that down a bit and uh, so that's our, our tone curve we can do the same thing in parametric just by dragging these highlights lights darks and shadow sliders left and right I'll just talk through a couple more of the tabs as I say there's the detail and sharpening tab here's the HSL grayscale tab and this is quite good if you want to alter how the colors the different colors appear in your image saturation you might want to boost the blues in the sky for example so you could go to saturation and uh, just drag the blues to the left there or the right and the right really boosts them far too much you might want to just drag them again you usually have to keep these fairly subtle maybe perhaps drag that to plus 10 and uh, you can play around with any of these colors and you can also alter their uh, their tone their luminance and their hue split toning oh actually I'll just go back to HSL grayscale if you want to convert to black and white you can click on the little box here it'll convert to black and white and then you can alter how the different colors appear in your final mono image you might want to use the blues for example to make those very dark by dragging that across there and you can see that makes the blues really punchy and uh, but we're going to actually turn that back off because we want to keep with our color original we've got a split toning tab which allows you to split tone black and white images and uh, a lens correction tab for correcting chromatic aberration and lens vignetting and uh, various effects and calibration tabs and some presets and snapshots so you don't need to worry about those um, as I say this is the key editing interface and once you've got the hang of what these sliders do and how intuitive they are you'll find it very difficult actually to go back to your, your old ways of editing in the usual window of Photoshop or Photoshop elements because this really is so intuitive and gives you so much control and as you can see it makes a very dramatic difference to our original image and makes it much more punchy and colourful.